Call me crazy, but I'd take 100 brand new moves over 100 brand new Pokemon any day. New Pokemon designs are great and all, but a well-designed move can seriously change how the battles are played and the existence of some moves completely warps the metagame. Today, I want to explore this topic and try to figure out what exactly is the best move in Pokemon. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, you should really just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that I know you'll enjoy once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because only like half of my viewers actually are. With that, let's get into it. Before we begin, here are some rules I should really be explaining about how I'm judging these moves. This list will consider signature moves, however, the moves will be judged separate from the Pokemon that learn them. Take for example Trop Kick, the signature move of Zarina, which has some great qualities in that it's perfectly accurate and will always lower the attack stat of the target. This combined with Zarina's great utility makes it sometimes the move of choice for the Pokemon. However, most grass types would much rather have access to Ogre Pond's Ivy Cudgel because of its 100 base power, high crit rate, and perfect accuracy. The damage of Ivy Cudgel will almost always be preferred over the utility of Trop Kick, which only has 70 base power. We also won't be including Z moves or Max moves as they're tied to a game's core mechanic and are basically made to be broken. And I won't include any mythical signature moves because they've never been tournament legal in VGC, so I can't really weigh their value with any data. Finally, I'll be doing this as sort of a tournament style video, deciding which move is the best among that category, and then finally comparing the value of these winning moves against each other. By the way, if you're a singles player, the answer is Stealth Rocks, the best move is Stealth Rocks. Okay, let's begin with the first category of moves that I'll be referring to as the $90 tier. Why is it called this? Because these moves cost $90. You know, for the game plus DLC. Game Freak loves giving us a reason to spend money on DLC, so of course, moves on DLC Pokemon will end up being just a notch above the rest. First off, we have Ivy Cudgel, the signature move of Ogre Pond, and pretty much the reason you run it. As a 100 base power move with perfect accuracy and a high crit rate, a good way to describe Ivy Cudgel is just Stone Edge with no drawback. But depending on the form, it can also be a Grass move, Water move, or Fire move. I'd say the Rock variant is probably the best though, I mean Rock is a great offensive typing, and there's practically no other perfectly accurate Rock moves. And with increased crit chance on top, this move will just randomly become 150 base power. But where Ivy Cudgel has a high crit rate, it's hard to beat 100% crit chance. Like an Urshifu signature move of Surging Strikes and Wicked Blow. Wicked Blow being a simple 75 base power dark move with 100% crit chance bumping up to 112 while ignoring defense boost is pretty whack. And I mean it's basically the best dark move in the game, but for my money I'll always take Surging Strikes over it, which achieves the same power just with 3 consecutive water moves instead. This would bypass Sturdy and Focus Sashes, albeit with the downside of taking more damage from Rocky Helmet and Rough Skin. We might be discussing the strongest attacks in Pokemon, but a whole other world of attacks and heroes await you in Raid Shadow Legends. I'm sure you've heard of Raid Shadow Legends before, considering they have 4 million users and 250 million downloads, along with constant monthly updates and the ability to play on both PC and mobile. But have you heard about their Summer Tavern event? Well, listen to this, not only do you have the opportunity to win a free gaming console or smartphone, but this event will give away Amazon gift cards with a total value of $5,000, as well as plenty of other in-game prizes. Raid Shadow Legends, who yes are sponsoring this video, are celebrating the arrival of summer with the special Summer Tavern minigame. Simply download Raid using my link in the description down below, head to summertavern.playroom.com, enter your Raid ID and join the competition. But that's not all. Raid is also doing a special collaboration with YouTube themselves. If you download Raid before July 17th, log in for 5 days and hit level 20 within 30 days, you can use your player ID to redeem a code for a 2 month trial of YouTube Premium that you'll find in the in-game events tab. This will work for both new and existing players. Want a head start to your raid journey? No worries, I've got you covered there. You can get the legendary Sun Wukong by using the promo code MONKEYKING. Sun Wukong is a popular character from Chinese mythology and folklore, known for his superhuman abilities, intelligence, and trickery. You might even know him from the classic novel Journey to the West. In-game, Sun Wukong can steal all buffs from opposing enemies before attacking them, as well as block buffs on all targets. His Staff of Wonders attack ignores 50% of the target's defense, which will also deal surplus damage to other enemies if the target is killed. And in addition to all this, he has a powerful passive which will fully revive him. You'll get insane bonuses available only via my link. Huge starter pack with an epic champion Tayrol from the High Elves faction, and another starter pack after reaching level 25 that includes epic Raktor Drath. Don't forget, all these champions are available after downloading via my custom link and QR code only. Come find me under the name MoxieBoosted and join my clan the Boosted Boys. And once again, thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. But wait, there's more! DLC moves, that is. Urshifu isn't the only Pokemon whose mom let him have two signature moves. Calyrex has either Astro Barrage or Glacial Lance, depending on what form it takes. 
If Calyrex is mounted on a Spectrier, it will get access to Astro Barrage, a 120 base power special Ghost move which hits both opponents with no drawbacks, and if Calyrex is mounted on Glacier, it will get access to Glacial Lance, a 120 base power physical Ice move which hits both opponents with no drawbacks. But which is stronger? Well, both Ghost and Ice are pretty powerful typings in their own respect. But where Ghost is resisted by Dark types and normal types of immunity, along with hitting Ghost and Psychic for super effective damage, Ice is much more powerful offensively by having nothing immune to it while hitting Grass, Flying, and Dragon for super effective damage. So between Surging Strikes and Glacial Lance, which one of these is the strongest among the $90 moves? I'm gonna have to go with Surging Strikes again. Yes, Glacial Lance is frankly an absurd move, but the lack of typical counterplay to Surging Strikes is insane. Focus Sash users aren't safe, Intimidate doesn't matter, and you bypass screens. The winner of the $90 move category is Surging Strikes. Next up, Switching Moves. Look, conceptually, Switching Moves are absurdly broken. In Pokemon, you can either attack, or switch, or forfeit, but by using a Switching Move, you can do two of these at once, and the two good ones. Deal damage, then leave. Fast Switch, Slow Switch, both have merit. If you attack and switch before the opponent moves, you get to switch into a resist or immunity to the incoming attack. And if you attack and switch after the opponent moves, you get to switch into that Pokemon without it taking damage. That's a win-win. So which among them is the best? We can immediately write off Teleport as it's basically just a guaranteed slow switch. Big whoop. And I'll be overlooking Chilly Reception as setting up Snow and switching out is cool for Snow teams and all, but every other move here broadly outclasses it. Baton Pass is strong in that it can switch out the user while passing all of its stat changes, and it's so strong in singles that Smogon did have it outright banned to prevent games from just being a setup and pass fest, but in VGC, the move is pretty much non-existent. Parting Shot is among the best switching moves in the game. While it doesn't deal any damage, it's a sound-based move meaning it bypasses substitutes, and it will lower both of the opponent's offensive stats before switching out the user, meaning that on Intimidate Pokemon such as Incineroar, it can make damage mitigation trivial. The only downside is that it can be blocked via Clear Amulet, Throat Chop, and Taunt. So it's not as reliable as the switching moves which deal direct damage. Among these are Flip Turn, Volt Switch, and U-Turn. And I'm gonna be so for real here guys, U-Turn just wins. I mean, no one is really clicking any of these moves to deal any actual damage, well, except for you Muradon, you freak. But every other Pokemon is basically clicking these moves for the utility of switching along with that slight amount of chip damage. U-Turn is the only move among these which no Pokemon is immune to. Storm Drain and Water Absorb can block Flip Turn, and Ground Types, Volt Absorb, Motor Drive, and Lightning Rod all absorb Volt Switch. U-Turn is straight up the most reliable of all of these, and of course, the most iconic. Now, if they made a flying type U-Turn, that'd be busted, but for now, bug suffices. U-Turn wins. Next up, we have Protecting Moves. This category is arguably just as busted as the switching category, negating all damage for a single turn has a wide variety of applications. This can be used to stall for timer, stall for chip damage, position better for a partner to switch in, perish trap, and be a jerk who knows they're about to lose, but you just want to click protect one more time before you forfeit. I hate you. I hate you. Okay, let's start. The protecting moves include Silk Trap, Baneful Bunker, Burning Bulwark, King Shield, Spiky Shield, Wide Guard, Quick Guard, and, well, Protect. Also detect, but it detect is just like worse protect. It, okay, so detect lets you ignore a lot of Pokemon using imprison and protect, but like I'm not gonna include it on this list. Okay. As great as wide guard and quick guard are, blocking specifically spread moves and priority moves will never be as applicable and powerful as the other protecting moves. And while burning bulwark can cause burns if contact is made, and King Shield will lower the target's attack stat if contact is made, not blocking status moves is a pretty huge downside. Don't get me wrong, slapping either of these moves onto a Pokemon would be really useful, but even Gouging Fire itself would sometimes run Protect to avoid getting taunted or slapped. What good is Protecting if you can't block Spore from Amoongus? You end up just being a sitting duck in front of it. For this reason, I can't really put either of them at the top despite their very strong effects. And for some reason, Silk Trap, the signature move of Spideops, also gets bypassed by status moves. As though Spideops really needed any of that business, it's already one of the saddest Pokemon of all time. Look, dropping speed on contact is very strong, but when only Spideops has this move, you can afford to make it just a little bit stronger. So that leaves us with Protect, Baneful Bunker, and Spiky Shield. Protect can't really be at the top of this list though, because while it does negate all direct damage and block status, the other two moves are just straight up upgrades. Baneful Bunker, the signature move of Toxapex, blocks all attacks and status moves while poisoning any Pokemon that makes contact with it. And Spiky Shield blocks attacks and status while dealing one eighth of the total health of the attacker and damage if they make contact with it. 
While Poison is a pretty powerful status condition to inflict, there's plenty of Steel and Poison type Pokemon which are just straight up immune to it. So Spiky Shield is the most splashable one of these, and thus the winner of the Protecting Move category. Okay, so the next category is kind of weird, because I kind of just made it up, but everything in Pokemon is made up. Pikachu ain't real. This category is Disrupting Moves. These are basically just moves that are notorious in doubles because of their utility and ability to sort of mess with the flow of battle. You'll see what I mean. Let's begin with Fake Out. Now, Fake Out is basically the quintessential VGC move. It's not very powerful in singles, but the ability to stop a Pokemon from moving on turn 1 then following up with a partner is an absurdly powerful option in matches. Fake Out can carry a Pokemon's viability on its own, and granting any Pokemon access to it could fix it entirely. Like, take Absol for example. It sucks in doubles, and it kinda sucks in singles too. It's slow, it's frail, and it just doesn't achieve much. But if you gave Absol access to Fake Out, now it can be a pretty threatening lead Pokemon. The likes of Incineroar, Iron Hands, and Rillaboom go from being strong to just outright being busted by having this move in their kit. So it's definitely up there in this category. Knockoff is a pretty great disrupting move in its own right, as it not only removes the item of the target, but if an item gets removed, its 65 base power is increased by 50%, meaning it's also a pretty beefy dark type attack. And don't get me wrong, the damage is great, but this move's ability to remove leftovers, citrus berry, and mental herb, it, basically any item, makes it worth using in the first place. Now, Thunder Wave, Nuzzle, and Will O Wisp are also some pretty great disrupting moves. While Nuzzle might seem like a direct upgrade to Thunder Wave in that it can't miss and will always paralyze the target, Thunder Wave's ability to be paired with Prankster and become a priority move makes it a pretty scary option on the likes of Thunderous or Grimmsnarl. Not only does it make great speed control, but 30% of the time, Pokemon will just not move at all, and that's kind of broken. And while I would like to say that the burning move Will-O-Wisp is great, yeah, I've lost too many matches off of missing it, so I just can't make it win this category. Taunt, on the other hand, has perfect accuracy and is a pretty devastating move. Any Pokemon who is taunted can no longer use status moves. This means no protect, no spore, no recover, nothing. The opponent is forced to click an attacking move, and in a game with the likes of Amoongus and Tornadus sitting at the top of the VGC world, you can effectively shut down entire game plans with this one move. Between all the disrupting moves, Taunt is the only one I would never dare build a team without. So for that reason, Taunt wins. We've reached the Speed Control category. Speed Control is basically essential to winning a match. I mean, what good is a speed stat if you have no bearing as to when in the turn order you actually attack? It's for this reason basically every VGC team includes at least one of these moves. First up are Electroweb and Icy Wind. Both of these moves have a very low chance at missing, but trust me, they will. While they deal negligible damage, their ability to hit both opponents and lower both of their speed stats is a very powerful effect. These moves are used by the likes of Regieleki, Fluttermane, Iron Bundle, and basically anything that can afford to fit it onto a moveset. But their value compared to other forms of speed control is definitely questionable. Tailwind grants the user's side of the field double speed for 4 turns. A fast priority Tailwind user like Tornadus or Whimsicott can instantly double a partner's speed stat and allow for them to sweep through a team. Late game Tailwind can also just straight up save matches from the brink of a loss. It's no wonder Tailwind has dominated competitive Pokemon since it was introduced, and, and even more so since dynamic speed was put into the game. But if you ask me, the most powerful form of speed control has to be Trick Room. For 5 turns, all speed tiers are inverted, making it so slower Pokemon will move first. The effect lasting so long has led to hard Trick Room teams being created that set up Trick Room and try to sweep the team as fast as possible. But a team doesn't have to be slow to make use of Trick Room. In a game where every team has some form of speed control, this move can be used to turn the tables on Icy Wind or Tailwind teams instantly, and the ability to reverse Trick Room at will makes it one of the most flexible speed control options. Trick Room wins. We got one last category, and it's simply good moves. These are all the moves that didn't fit into the other categories, but they're just so strong they deserve to be mentioned. Starting off this list, we have Gigaton Hammer, the signature move of the Tinkaton line, which would be busted if it weren't for Tinkaton having a measly 75 attack stat. Despite this, the move is still limited by the mechanic of not being able to use it twice, but a 150 base power steel move can't be overlooked. Imagine if they gave this move to Metagross, it'd just be a straight up KO button, and for that reason it does need to be considered. Next up is Extreme Speed. Where other priority moves are limited by their low power or conditional use cases like Sucker Punch, Extreme Speed gets to have its cake and eat it too. As an 80 base power normal type move, it deals solid damage from any physical attacker, especially ones who are already normal types. But beyond that, it has plus 2 priority rather than plus 1, so it goes before moves like Quick Attack and even slower Follow Me users. This move single-handedly carries Dragonite and a lot of other physical attackers in Gen 9 VGC, as any physical attacker with this move will pretty much always run it. 
Ice Beam might seem like a weird inclusion, but let's be real. A perfectly accurate 90 base power ice move that can freeze? Yeah, that's pretty strong. Why not Thunderbolt or Flamethrower? Because those moves can't prevent a Pokemon from moving possibly ever again. So Ice Beam is just strong. I'm going to include it in consideration for the best move ever. I just feel like I need to. Finally, we have Rock Slide. While this move doesn't have the best accuracy, it does have a very unique property. It's a physical rock attack which hits both opponents and has a 30% chance to flinch. VGC has a saying that's evergreen. If there's a rock slide, there's a way. And while it's not the most splashable move of all time, I'd be hard pressed to not declare it the winner of this category purely because of its history of absolutely robbing people of games. For that reason, rock slide wins. Okay, so we've declared a winner for every category. Our final moves are Surging Strikes, U-Turn, Taunt, Spiky Shield, Trick Room, and Rock Slide. While these moves are fairly difficult to compare due to their vastly different natures, I still feel I can weigh them based on how comfortable I'd be running a team without them. First off, we need to eliminate Surging Strikes and Rock Slide. As powerful as these moves are, they're not essential to winning matches, and truly I don't think that the best move in Pokemon would ever be a damaging attack, since status moves warp the game far drastically than any attack ever could. U-Turn is a bit trickier to eliminate though, due to the fact that pivoting into another Pokemon while dealing damage can enable a lot of strategies, but ultimately I don't believe it's anywhere near the value of the other moves. Next on the chopping block is Trick Room. Yes, it's arguably the best form of speed control in the game, and it completely changes the flow of a match itself, but the sheer value of Taunt and Spiky Shield outweigh it by just a bit. So, between Taunt and Spiky Shield, what's the best move in the game? Taunt can prevent opponents from clicking any status moves whatsoever. It can prevent Tailwind, Trick Room, Protect, Bulk Up, anything that isn't dealing direct damage. And in VGC, where status moves enable you to perform a wide variety of strategies, its value really can't be understated. But ultimately, Spiky Shield is definitely the best move in VGC. That might sound weird to say out loud, but if I told you that Protect was the best move in the game, you wouldn't even bat an eye at that statement. Spiky Shield is just a direct upgrade to Protect, and honestly, any one of Protect, Spiky Shield, or Baneful Bunker would outright beat Taunt in my opinion. That's just the sheer value of Protecting in VGC. There's far too many lines that become possible by protecting a Pokemon. Protect and Switch, Protect and Trick Room, Protect and KO, Protect and Knock Off. In a doubles match, the ability to bait out an opponent to attack with one or even two other Pokemon and then just saying, no, no damage this turn, has a measurable value. With Protect, you can stall out an opponent's Trick Room turns, Tailwind turns, Parish Song turns, and even their moves PP entirely. Protect even allows you to more easily win via timer if need be. Without a doubt in my mind, the most powerful move in Pokemon is Spiky Shield, a direct upgrade to Protect. Spiky Shield wins. But that's just my opinion. I'm sure plenty of you guys disagree, and I welcome your comments. Let me know what you think is the strongest move in Pokemon, and let me know what I should talk about next in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, it'd mean the world to me, and if you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos like these lovely people. A special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Jordan Harridge, and Ranger Lance for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about current VGC metagame trends and a Twitch channel where I stream almost every day, both of which are going to be in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.